everybody, welcome back to the Law and Crime Network. My name is Bob Bianchi. I'll be with you to three o'clock. And once again, the Law and Crime Network has picked a phenomenal trial, Florida versus Ashley MacArthur. Okay, man, you got a lot going on here in this case. Prosecutor asking a lot of poignant questions. I want to bring in Katie Smith, my in-studio guest, who's litigated hundreds of cases in federal court in both the Southern and Eastern District. 2015 New York Metro Super Lawyer, lawyer Rising Star, a JD from uh, New York Law, which uh, a lot of my friends have gone through civil rights, personal injury, and criminal defense. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Okay, so, I mean, prosecutors laying out here a lot about motive and a lot about guns, uh, trying to show that there's a lot of money being exchanged, and she's giving this ex-boyfriend of hers quite a few things. So he's on the stand for the prosecution, probably not so happy, at least he doesn't look so. So what's the prosecution doing here, Katie? I think they're trying to lay out, number one, that she, you know, she had this money, what she was spending the money for, that she obviously had weaponry, and that she had been, you know, sort of slowly sort of disclosing some information that will ultimately be very helpful in the prosecution. Yeah, and, and one thing that to note here is that she is currently serving a sentence for having scammed and skimmed off these jukeboxes, and she was convicted of racketeering and organized fraud uh, from, from this family business. So this is a woman who's spending a lot of money, but she's also scheming and scamming a lot of money. And of course, that's the main motive that the prosecution has. And we always have to say this. We always have to make sure our audience understands that motive is not necessary for a prosecutor to ever prove. But I can tell you as a homicide prosecutor that's prosecuted a lot of cases, you certainly like to have it. And we have 34,000 motives here, $34,000 mm -hmm. that was missing. You know, when you're, when you're in deep and you're trying to cover up your tracks, obviously she was in deep with a lot of different things. It sounds like she was desperate. And I think that that's what they're doing here with this witness is drawing out some of the, the financial motives and also the means that she had. Right, and money is being a motive for murder is as old as the caveman itself. Excellent, Katie, great to have you here in studio. All right, Katie, so, uh, you know, defense chipping away at some of the things the prosecution was trying to bring out there. Uh, the objection was uh, whether he ever saw her being an angry person, so they went to sidebar. Um, so what do you think so far the defense crossed? I think for what he's got, he's doing a pretty good job. I think he's trying to show that she's sort of this generous person and that giving all these firearms and these guns was not necessarily a nefarious thing that she wound up giving things to other people. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, well, what were the strings that were attached? Was she doing this for money laundering purposes associated with her fraud? But at the end of the day, it's raising more questions for me than it is answering anything. Well, I'll tell you where I would fit in as a prosecutor for me. And, and let's keep in mind that she is serving a sentence right now for fraud, for skimming from her own family, is that maybe she is very generous. And I've had cases like this, giving laptop computers, giving motor cars and trucks and giving these guns, but then they don't have a way to pay for them. And they wind up doing nefarious and illegal things in order to do that. And one of those things could be scamming the victim out of her $34,000, as you said before, 34,000 reasons to kill. No, that, no, that's a very good point. Somebody who sort of is addicted to this generosity and then the feedback and like the, the you know, the sense of thanks that they get from everybody, they wind up digging themselves in a hole for that. It's, it's, uh, it's interesting. I want to see how this is going to play out. Yeah, and, and what, what value do you put? I read the arrest affidavit in this case, and essentially what they're saying is that there's these 34,000 reasons and the body is found right by her property. Right. And there were some things that she had said that were not accurate to the police. I mean, it's basically the case here. Strong enough circumstantially to go forward? Well, I think also adding together with that that she is the last person who saw her alive and that, you know, the, the girlfriend of the victim was actively texting with her while she was with the defendant and then it goes radio silent. All of those things together. Yeah, it goes radio silent until later on in the night. This right. really strange text comes forward and says, I kind of got to get my life straightened right. out or whatever. So breaking off that connection with her, which clearly was not a text sent by the victim. Right, which is really weird. And you see that a lot of times in these cases where, you know, the person has been killed or injured and they try to do that to get like the loved one off of their backs and off of the trail. So that to me is even more suspicious. All right, Kay Smith, thank you very much for this analysis. Going to be a fascinating case. A lot of twists and turns already. Defense is fighting hard, though. We're going to take a break, do some business here at the Law Crime Network, and we'll be right back. Stay with us.